Fun show coming up today here on Locked On Blue Devils. My good pal Jason Jordan coming back by. He knows everything that there is to know in the world of recruiting. What has he seen so far out of these very talented Duke freshmen this season? We dive into it here today on Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils. Your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on the show today. If you haven't done so already, please be sure that you follow and subscribe to the Locked On Blue Devils podcast feed to support our show and listen to it each and every day. You're also able to subscribe and watch the show daily on YouTube. Your support means the absolute world to us when you take the time to check us out with everything that we've got going on there at YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils, and I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Coming up on today's show, I'm super excited to bring on my good pal, Jason Jordan. He's our director of recruiting uh, with Locked On, with Sports Illustrated. He's been all over the place throughout his incredible career, and we're going to take a look at all of the Duke freshmen thus far, what they've been able to accomplish. And these conversations are always brought to you by LinkedIn who is our official college football and college basketball recruiting sponsor across Locked On. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager. You want to go to linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Jason, as always, the time is greatly appreciated. It is our first chat here in 2023. So happy new year to you, my friend. Thanks for coming on the show. Happy new year. Good to be here. All right, let's get to it. This Duke team, they've got loads of freshmen. Once again, year one for the John Shire era, seven freshmen on campus, uh, five really played, two not so much when you take a look at Christian Reeves and Jaden Shute and what they'll right. be able to do in the years to come. But all in all, what have you seen out of the Duke freshmen? Um, you know, I think there are some it's, – it's when you have such a, a deep and talented class – I think there are different nuances that come into play with everything. And um, you have to take all that, th- that into consideration, um, you know, but I, I think, you know, there are definitely some surprises and, um, uh, but most of them are probably on par with what I, what I would have expected. Uh, so you so take far. a look, yeah, you take a look at some of these guys and uh, injuries were obviously the big yeah. story at, right out of the gates for someone like Derek Whitehead and right. Derek Lively, the second, it's always so difficult to kind of navigate injuries because you know these guys want to continue their professional careers at some point. They want to be set up for the future, but you also want to utilize them and help win basketball games for Duke or for whatever college these guys are playing for. So for Whitehead and Lively in particular, what'd you make of their injury situations? Yeah. I mean, I I knew it would be a setback. I mean, those, the types of injuries they had they're you know, to your point, they're, they're, you know, definitely going to be cautious with them. They're probably going to slow roll, especially because of the timing of it. They're like, ah, it's early in the season. You know, no need to risk anything. Uh, you know, as far as re-injury or anything like that. And I know that that was the that was the um, call to action uh, on all fronts. So um, I think they're just starting to get into their groove now. Um, and you know, for a team that's trying to find chemistry in jail, and I mean, come on, in, in their you know, new coach, new same expectations, new coach uh, coming off, uh, leaving the, you know, potentially the greatest coach of all time. And, um, you know, with a lot of expectations and things like that, I think the, the accl- the reacclimation process is different and it, and that can take uh, longer, not to make excuses for him, but it's just, it is what it is. We've seen it before. And um, so I think, they're just starting to kind of – like you can see Dariq is uh, obviously starting to come on now at 18 points in the last game. I think he scored double figures in the last three um, three outs. So that's um, obviously a, a positive sign for him. A lot of people were down on him early on. But, again, you know, you have to understand the pedigree, understand the background, and he's a winner, man. Like he's always been a winner. He's always figured it out. 
Um, he's been in situations where he's not the guy. Most of the time, he wasn't the guy at Montverde. People don't, don't know that. He was our player of the year at SI last year, but, you know, he waited his turn, and he's uh, he's a patient guy, and he's a guy who um, who sticks with it. So it's not shocking to me that he figured it out. Derek Lively's kind of the same thing. He, yes, he was the number one player in the country, but he wasn't like the guy that was number one from sophomore year. It right. was like the summer before his senior year is when the spring before his senior year is when he started to come on and get that number one buzz, you know, when he was playing alongside Jalen Duran um, with team final. So he kind of blew up in that spring and that summer. And um, so he's a guy who, you know, I think he's still trying to figure out his niche. I mean, I think people look at his, you know, stat line and, and it's, there's no way around it. It's not, it's not all that impressive. I think yeah, he's he struggled. Yeah, three points, three rebounds. He's only play, playing like 16 minutes a game. And they're like, oh, my goodness, Ryan Young plays over the number one player in the country. And, you know, but Ryan Young's a beast. He's a dog yeah. down there, you know. And so I think, um, you know, I think that obviously the injury set him back. Um, um, Ryan Young's a blue-collar guy. Derek's a, a blue-collar guy, but he's also a freshman trying to figure out a role, you know, um, trying to find his groove, you know, he – he scored in a variety of different ways. I think, you know, he's trying to find his, his um, settle into a role, a clearly defined role. It seems like a lot of guys don't know, or maybe they know, but they haven't accepted or they haven't meshed into their clearly defined role. I think Derek would be like the guy um, in that class that I would say hasn't really um, meshed into his, a clearly defined role. Like, I mean, I think, if he just blocks shots and rebounds, and I think the offense will come, you know. Yeah, let um, me get to more of those guys in just a second because yeah. I've got more thoughts on Derek Whitehead and Derek Lively the second, yeah. and of course more freshmen to discuss. But we've got to take our first time out here today on Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils on this Wednesday is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. It's the number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college basketball, Duke takes on Pitt a little bit later tonight. The NFL gears up for the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. So we've got all of that at Bet Online. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those as well at Bet Online. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, I'm J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Jason Jordan. It's funny, we're talking about Derek Whitehead and, you know, talking about his game thus far this season. Uh, there was a really good profile done by Connor O'Neill from Devils Illustrated and the Rivals website talking about Derek Whitehead had a conversation with his Aunt Mercedes, basically telling him, you're not injured anymore, don't use as an excuse, go out and be you and play. And with that, he's now had all of these consecutive double-digit scoring outings in a row, including back-to-back -back games with four makes from three-point range. Two thoughts there, Jason. One, I think we all need an Aunt Mercedes in our life to have a hype man in your corner at all times. Uh, but then secondly, I didn't know this three-point shooting was necessarily going to be there for Derek Whitehead, who's shooting 37% from outside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know – that he he definitely needed something. I mean, there's no way around it. Like you know, the the thing that comes with uh, hype is expectation. So, and I'm a realist. I like Derek. Derek was our Player of the Year. But the reality is, even with the injury, um, yes, there's a setback. But he was doing things that were out of character for him, and he didn't look good. You know, it's just, it, it ain't no way around it. You know, <laughs> I mean, the reality is. Jalen Blake shouldn't get minutes over Derek Whitehead. That's that shit. Uh, respect to Jalen Blake's. I think he's a really capable backup, but he shouldn't play over Derek Whitehead. So if he's playing over Derek, that's indicative of Derek not living up to his potential. That's the truth. So um, whatever he needs, Auntie, what you know, I mean, Auntie was the catalyst. You know, that's great. But you know, he's obviously, you know, settling in and um, doing what we've all known him to do over the last two or three years. I mean, obviously he's won national titles. He's played in my bird or whatever, but none of that matters. And this is what I always try and tell uh, guys, as you can see all the one and done talk from, and it's not just the Duke kids. I mean, you can look across the board. It's not, 
in this in that 23 class um no 22 class um some you know it, it's you got to show and prove you know mm -hmm. you really have to show and prove and um you know he's starting to come into his own but that yeah i expected that but he's a guy you can really light a fire under him he's a guy you can really ride and get on um but he's gonna typically answer the call and that's what he's starting to do how can Duke get more out of Derek Lively the second? Because we mentioned there hasn't been a lot of playing time. Ryan Young's advanced stats have been really impressive. Duke's been much better on the defensive end and offensive end of the floor when he's been out there. But this is Derek Lively the second who had such a huge skyrocket up the recruiting rankings to be one of the top guys in the entire country. And uh, we just haven't quite seen that yet at Duke. Yeah, I think he just has to get comfortable. And, you know, that, that, that's on John. John kind of owns that too. Like that, that's on him too. He's got to put him in positions where he's uh, could be more effective. But I think honestly, Derek just needs to focus on rebounding and blocking shots because if he does that, then the offense, I think will come to him. That's what he did with team final. He wasn't the man at team final. Like he played with um, Jalen Duren and Imani Bates. You know, mm -hmm. You're not going to be the man on that team. Like, <laughs> but what he did was fill roles. He uh, filled the lane. He ran like a deer. He got put back dunks. And I think if he would just focus on that and not worry about being the number one pick in next year's draft and all right. that stuff. And, you know, like, honestly, if I were John, I'd sit him down and say at the end of the, like right now, that's out the window. That's right. that number one pick stuff. Nobody's picking your number one right now. That's the, right. That's the hard truth. Right. But what we can do is try to go from here, turn it around. And I'm not saying we can't turn it around and make it a reality again, but we have to focus on the little things and the things that have gotten you to that number one status. And I think he can totally turn it around, but I think he has to settle into a role and accept that his role is going to be rebounding and blocking shots. And when he does that, I promise you the offense will come. I'm here with my good buddy, Jason Jordan, who is uh, one of Locked On's premier recruiting insiders, along with our pal, John Garcia Jr., who covers the football side of things. So taking a look at these Duke freshmen, we've gone way too long without mentioning Kyle Filipowski, who set a Duke basketball record, the first player ever to open their career with four double-doubles. He surpassed what Grant Hill and Marvin Bagley the third were able to do in their Duke careers to get it started. Uh, and then we've been able to see consistent scoring efforts from Filipowski all season long. Your thoughts on his play so far? Not what I thought. Not what I thought. I always said I thought Kyle was a bad man. I thought he was a guy. Leading could, scorer right now for Duke. Yeah, you could facilitate the offense through him. He's very assertive, very sure of himself. And I think – I mean, I think some of their – if they had his mentality, I'm telling you, like, you know, Kyle <laughs> – you know, I like a cocky player on on the court. You know what I'm saying? And then, and, and I mean that in a good way. I mean that in a great way. So Kyle is definitely – he is definitely uh, the president of his own fan club, and I mean that in a great way uh, because I think to be who you are, you have to be that. You have to take on that persona, and I think um, he steps into that and fills it out very well, and um, he's productive because of it because he has all the skills in the world, but he also has the mentality, and when those two things marry, you end up leading Duke in scoring. Which is what he's done, and uh, hopefully it continues – uh, for the Stoop basketball team. The three-point shot was there right out of the gates. We knew he'd be able to stretch the floor a little bit. And a little bit of a shooting slump right now is Kyle yeah. Filipowski. But like all great shooters, they'll get out of it at some point, I'm sure. All right, Mark Mitchell. Uh, he had another double-digit scoring effort this past weekend against Boston College. Had three block shots. Uh, he's such a jack-of-all-trades yeah. from what I've seen so far this season. What have you made of his play? Love Mark. I've always a bit – I've probably been the biggest fan of Mark um, than anybody else in that class. Cause I think to your point, he's a jack of all trades, but I think he just needs to be more assertive. I think he needs to shoot more. I think he needs to call his own number more um, because he's a matchup problem. Like when he gets downhill, he can knock down shots. He can stretch the defense. Um, he can get to the rack, you know, you can give him the ball in the low post and score with both hands. Uh, I just think he needs to be more assertive. Uh, and I think that that they're going to lean on him a little bit more and, you know, his diverse skill set. I think John will lean on that skill set even more as the season tends to progress. But going into ACC play, they're going to need him to be uh, more assertive for them to reach their full potential. Has that kind of always been his dynamic? Uh, he kind of strikes me as a player that 
wants the team to do so well. And it do, not to say this guy doesn't have a dog in him or anything like yeah. that, but it almost feels like uh, he hasn't been the most aggressive player. Um, has that always kind of been the case for Mark Mitchell? Uh, and I can't say that. I mean, at Sunrise, you know, I mean, he did play with Grady Dick. Sure. Know, um, McDonald's player of the year. And, you know, Grady had an amazing senior season. But Mark's pretty assertive. Like, he, he's, he's pretty sure of himself, too. I think on this team, it's like, you know, I, I think – I think people have to understand their roles. Yeah. And, you know, I think they have to accept them. And I, and I see a team that does is not – they're not accepting the role. Or they maybe they're not clearly – I'd imagine that the Mino and John, I know they're clearly defined. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just that they're not accepting them. They're not gelling the right way. They're mis, there are a lot of miscues, especially defensively. Um, so that just speaks to chemistry. And it does speak to uh, players not accepting um, – the roles that are have been clearly defined, like me knowing that staff, I know they're clearly defined. So, um, that that's an issue. That's a communication issue that they'll have to work out. And that's a big kink that you're gonna have to work out, especially going forward. This three game stretch they're about to go on. I mean, we're about to, you get to really find out. No doubt about that. That's yeah. for sure. All right, let's uh, take our final time out here on today's show, and we'll wind down the conversation after this here on Locked On Blue Devils. Thanks again for making Locked On Blue Devils your first listen every single day. Your support means the absolute world. Do make sure that you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Our buddy Jason Jordan makes appearances on the show weekly as well. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Join Isaac Shade and Andy Patton each and every day. You can also hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Moving forward and winding down today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, I'm J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Jason Jordan. You can follow him on Twitter at Jason NC Jordan. Tell me a little bit about your coverage, uh, why folks should follow you, Jason, when it comes to everything in the world of high school basketball recruiting. Well, we just, do, you know, cover it. I think we just do a good job of covering it from uh, different perspectives, different voices, and um, try and get the human side to this crazy world that is recruiting. So, um, yeah, definitely check me out on all social media platforms. Um, and we'll just go from there, man. It's a lot of season ahead. I love it. You mentioned the Duke schedule coming up. They've got Pittsburgh at Clemson uh, and then a home game against Miami. This Duke basketball team is going to be without Jeremy Roach uh, for an undefined period of time, according to head coach John Shire, um, who has uh, re-aggravated a toe injury has Jeremy Roach, 11 points per game in his junior season, the captain for the Blue Devils. This is going to set up a conversation for us to have about Tyrese Proctor to wind down our freshman play so or conversation so far. Uh, but tell me a little bit about Jeremy Roach, because I know you're right there in North Carolina, and I got to hear what you've seen so far from Roach this year. Yeah, love it. Love what he's done. I, I can I definitely see his growth. I mean, obviously, you can tell that he's definitely taken his, uh, taken his place at the top. Uh, taking his cues as the leader. And I think he's done a really good job. I think he's done a really good job. Very assertive. He's kind of picked up where he left off from last March. I mean, he looked like he was a tra- on a <laughs> leading a traveling all-star team last year. He got him to the final four. There's no doubt about it. His play. Absolutely. Was, uh, and, I, you know, I was right there in the NCAA tournament with him. So it was remarkable to watch. And just to see the carryover um, is something that is huge because, um, you know, it just speaks to the consistency and the mentality. Uh, to carry it over from season to season. So I've been very impressed with him. He's been aggravated by this foot, this toe yeah. injury. And he, so he's going to be out for a little bit. And I think this is a good decision by Duke to make sure that he is 100% yeah. himself. Hasn't been there um, on the defensive end of the floor to the degree of which we know Jeremy Roach is capable mm-hmm. of. And that's going to mean uh, more opportunity for Jalen Blakes, who's been stepping up in his sophomore season. But more importantly, Tyrese Proctor, the freshman who reclassed from Australia. What have you noticed from Proctor so far this season? I liked him up and down. Um, you know, I think he's still getting acclimated to um, this, you know, the American game uh, consistently, right? You know, I mean, he's had uh, games, you know, in and out of our, you know, the, the tenacity, the athleticism, the speed, um, all those things matter. And that's, you know, I've talked to different coaches about, you um, uh, players from overseas and, and, and you'll talk to, if you could talk to any players from overseas, they'll tell you those things, especially the speed um, and just the, um, 
the instincts that guys have to acclimate themselves to and learn yeah. over here. It, it's a curve. It's a huge curve, um, especially on the defensive end, but certainly on the offensive end because he's running the point. And so, um, you know, nobody thought that Jeremy Rose would get hurt, but this is just the game of sports, right? So yeah. um, he's going to have to learn on the fly. He's going to have to learn very quickly. But, it, you know, it's a bad thing, yes, because it's their captain and, you know, nobody wants to see a player get hurt. But it could be potentially a good thing for Duke to let uh, Tyrese grow and, you know, kind of learn on the job training. And, you know, he does. He, he's getting thrown in the fire and he he needs that. Like he needs that. He needs those reps. He needs that experience. And I think he's another one. You have to be assertive. I think he has to be very much uh, more assertive and more. He doesn't seem to be, to me, consistently sure of himself. And I think it's a mentality thing. And um, I think it's something that he could grow leaps and bounds with this murderer's role of a schedule they're going to have over the next three games. So we'll see. He definitely has a skill set. He definitely has a talent. But um, that doesn't mean anything without mentality. And I think he could. He could grow leaps and bounds if he really steps into it and kind of steps up to the plate men- mentality-wise. Now, Jason, you're somebody that going into the season told me a lot, told our Blue Devil fans a mm-hmm. lot about Proctor's passing ability. Yeah. I've seen it already this season. Some of the one-handed swing passes, yeah. cross-court looks, and vision he has is just next level for someone yeah. who, again, is only 18 years old and right. reclassed. The shooting ability has kind of been slow out of the gates. Yeah. Just 30% from the floor, 24% from three-point range. But he's shooting 88% from the free throw line. The stroke looks good. I think it's just probably a matter of time before those shots start to fall, right? Yeah, that was surprising to me. I thought, you know, I I definitely thought he would be more in the higher 30s Mm -hmm. uh, from the perimeter. But, you know, to your point, I mean, the game is faster. You know, you got to think quicker. And he's playing with quick guards and, um, you know, and – I think it'll help that Derek is coming on. You know, it takes the pressure off of him. And obviously, Jalen Lake is shooting really well from the perimeter. So, um, when you're taking that pressure off of him, it, it gets him better looks. It gets him more time to set his feet. Um, and as you knock shots down, percentages go up. Um, because it's a mentality thing. It's all about confidence, man. He has all the tools. He just has to shoot it with more confidence. And I see the lack thereof right now <laughs> when he's taking shots. But all it takes is for some of them to go in. Um, they, they don't have to be threes. You can ask anybody who's, who hoops. You know, you just need to see the ball go in. You just need to see the ball go in, and it changes your whole perspective. Jason, we look at this Duke team, 12-4 and four on the season, 3-2 and two in conference play, taking on Jeff Capel a little bit later tonight in their next ACC game, a homecoming, so to speak. We've never seen a Shire versus Capel matchup. Leaving that aside, where do you think this Duke basketball team is right now at this point of the season, and what can they do in the weeks to come? Do you think? Well, I think they're at a, you know, I think they're at a, a crossroads. Like I think, I, I think they need to, um, you know, they need to have some player meetings, and you know, they're not, they aren't playing with the tenacity. They are they're, the miscues on defense. They just, they look like a team that is out of its depth. And um, that obviously isn't indicative of Duke basketball. I know uh, that's something that they've been working on. That's something that they've been talking about, I'm sure. Um, But I think they all need to get on the same page. I think they all need to um, clearly accept, you know, roles. And I think they need to um, understand that there can be success with the acceptance of roles. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, big success because they have all the talent. Um, but once again, if you're not on the same page and it doesn't look like they are right now. Um, but, you know, that that personnel, those guys, knowing those guys, I know that it would it doesn't it's not going to take much for them to get on the same page. And I think they I mean, you know, they look great, too. Let's not forget. Um, so I think it's a real opportunity with Jeremy out for them to grow leaps and methods. Jeremy's going to be Jeremy. Right. Yeah. Everybody respects him. There's no doubt about it. So if they can grow while he's out, I think it could be huge for them uh, going into the end of January, and into February. Jason, thanks so much as always for coming on the podcast here. Always appreciate your insights and what you bring here to the program. Looking forward to our conversations in the weeks to come. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.
That's my pal Jason Jordan joining us here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. And that's going to wind down our conversation here today. Thanks again, as always, for your support of Locked On Blue Devils, making us your first listen each and every day. Follow our show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. And you can follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.